what you get is you get those anecdotal stories that are really, really special. So it doesn't make any difference which family it is, it's, it's, all, it's all special. As people can see um, that a Waterloo kid uh, went off uh, 30 years later, come back home and is happy to be back home. Maybe my daughter can then see exactly what we really did, because I haven't opened up to my daughter. And so I look at that as a value that veterans can do. They can leave something, a milestone, uh, some unique history uh, that their family could share later on in life. Doing oral histories is important because at some point in time, we all as humans crave to understand and know where we come from. Our museums provide the opportunity for us to understand ourselves and our history. The Grout Museum has a strong tradition of collecting oral histories and I hope we can continue to do that because once the storytellers are gone, we lose part of our history. Because I had just come from Mississippi, you know, I wasn't registered to vote in Mississippi. Being 21, you couldn't, you couldn't register then. My dad was 60 years old when Martin Luther King came through before he could register because you had to have had to pay poll tax and recite the Constitution of the United States. He was a property owner, but he couldn't register because he, he had to pay, he paid poll tax, but he couldn't register to vote because he didn't know the Constitution of the United States. I need someone to look at this video and say, hey, she's a African-American female and she did it. And there are so many of us that have done it and fought the good fight and paved the way through the military. My challenges were challenges, that's what they were, and I had some really rough days, but I didn't give up. I picked up my bootstraps and kept on going and made a way and paved the way for so many that have come after me. And there were some that have done it before me and I'm grateful to them.